morning everybody today is a big day uh, we have an appointment with Brith's surgeon and we have a, her, a prenatal for her with her doctor after that the important well they're both important but the appointment with the surgeon is in 15 minutes we're about to walk out the door and head over there now it's gonna tell us what day our baby will be born what day the c-section will be on Usually, like, I'm just learning all this stuff now. I'm no expert on this. The due date is April 1st, my birthday. But if it's a C-section, it's usually like a week or two before. I don't know what, to, I, I think he's gonna say the 25th. I also think it will be March 25th. Mostly because 25 is my favorite number because I was born on July 25th. So was Chevy. So we're both guessing the same day, but we also both guessed girl and we were very wrong. So I bet you one of the dogs is right. <laughs> They're so much smarter than we are some days. Maybe about a week or two early, right? Yeah, a week or two-ish, I don't know. I don't know, we'll see what uh, our surgeon's got to say. I'm very excited. Can't wait to meet our son, see what he looks like. Guaranteed just like him because I can already tell from the ultrasound pictures. He looks like dad So He might have my lips though. I was I had a sneaky suspicion. He had my lips. So we'll see We'll see. I'm just excited to bring a mini Josh into the world keep fogging up. We're meeting the surgeon that's going to do her c-section today. Mm -hmm. I hear he's the best. And what are we all finding out other than the date? I don't know what to expect I guess in the surgical okay. the delivery room. I, I don't know. We're I new. don't know. <laughs> we have no idea what's going on. <laughs> you ask me questions and I'm like dude I know as much as you do. <laughs> Pretty much. How about you little guy? What date do you think you, it'll be? What date do you think you'll be here? I guess you would know. He's pretty quiet still. Yeah, he was kicking up here just a minute ago. He's definitely in a head down position. Mm -hmm. I know, because I pee every five seconds and nothing comes up. <laughs> just about ready though. Mm-hmm. It's all in position. Mm-hmm. We tried out the new Burger King in town. The lineup was still crazy. It was like going to Tim Hortons. It was it was lined up around the restaurant in like a circle around the entire restaurant. And there was no seating inside. Steinbeck is very excited when new things pop up and new restaurants. Not a lot happens around here and no one has anything to do. So when a new restaurant like Burger King opens, everyone's free. Everyone's like, what are you doing today? Nothing. Wanna go check out Burger King? Yeah, I'm not doing anything. That's for like the first week. Yeah, so uh, it's, it was crazy. The, the meal was good. The fries were very fresh because the, uh, uh, the fryers were new. Uh, they missed out, we got the uh, mozzarella sticks and they missed out on our marinara sauce, which did not make Rit very happy. Made me quite unhappy. She wants her marinara sauce and- That's why I ordered matzo sticks. We also ordered takeout and we took it home. And by the time we got home here, it was cold. No, Josh had to write a call. lengthy text to somebody while we waited in the car. So that took an extra five, six, seven minutes. It was like 30 seconds. No, it wasn't. His concept of time, don't ever trust him. <laughs> we had another gift show up at our mailbox. Nice little card in it. This one came from Greg and Leslie Marr. And they are from Decatur, Michigan, in the U.S. Nice little gift wrapping. You want to open it? No, you can go ahead. 
Months. Oh, and more. Lots of them. Hang right on. Thanks, guys. Very nice. It's good blue. Greg and Leslie Marr. I like their little poem they had on here. A gift for Baby G. Didn't know just what to get or just what you would choose, but figured this was something that your little one could use. I like the little poem that was on the card here. A gift for Baby G. Didn't know just what to get or just what you would choose. But figured this was something your little one could use. Wishing you all the happiness possible. Greg and Leslie Marr. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Well, I'm all packed up and ready to head out on the road. I'm going into Minnesota. Uh, close down to by Minneapolis, I think. And then back. So today we were a little disappointed, but meh, it is what it is. We uh, couldn't find out the birth date just yet. Maybe later today, but probably in the next couple of days is what I'm thinking. Uh, we have to drop off some paperwork at the hospital for her. And then the hospital will call us and tell us when the date's going to be. So I guess maybe we'll know later today, but when we do find out, we'll let you know. First, I'm still banking on the 25th. Mm hmm That seems like the most likely date. Or at least in and around there. Yeah, the surgeon did say that they like to do it at 39 weeks, which would be the 25th. Well, we met with the surgeon and we both really liked him. Yeah. Good nice, vibes. Good vibes. Nice young guy. Well, not too young, but... In his 40s. It was comforting to see <laughs> a little bit of gray hair. Didn't want him to be too young. Yeah, and what did he say? He'd done, like hundreds of c-sections he specializes in c-sections yeah this is like pretty much all he does he's a family doctor and he's like a sort of mixed practice but his main thing is he's a, a c-section doctor yeah looking forward to it i still feel like we made the right decision for our mm -hmm. baby so i'm just going to look at the calendar here a little bit i think i'm going to be stopping work a week earlier than i thought uh, if it's going to be on the 25th, yes, I'll have two more weeks of work, including this week. So I'm leaving now uh, to head out to work, be back next weekend, or hide to bed's coming on the weekend, and then one more week after that, and then I'm done till end of April. Depending on how she does, I'm planning to go back for May 1st, but yeah, not, not too much time, not too much work left. A couple more loads. Yeah. Baby, 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 baby. All baby. All baby. And puppy dogs. And puppy dogs. Can't neglect that. They're <laughs> our first babies. And I'm going to keep all the home time and family stuff during that time here on this main channel. That's what the majority, overwhelming majority of you suggested when I asked. It was all going to be right here. I'll put it into a different playlist though. So you'll be able to follow just the specific journey if you want to. And if you're not into the home time stuff, well, May 1st, we'll be back in the truck. So just hang tight. Tentatively. Yes, tentatively May 1st.
And of course there's all our stuff that's gonna go eventually one day into our house once we get a bigger house. Freezer's been working great. Don't have anything in it yet. Uh, next weekend we'll go shopping. Maybe do a Costco run. We need to get a Costco membership. We usually shop at Superstore because we use their gas station. And when you fill up gasoline at the gas station outside Superstore, it's sort of like Canadian Walmart. Fill up gas there, it gives you free points to use in the store. And we usually get like, like 50 to 60 or so bucks to use whenever we go shopping, it seems. We make pretty good uh, return off that. So we usually fuel there and shop there. Either way, I'm gonna stock up on food a little bit, especially since we got a baby coming. I don't ever want uh, to be in a situation where we're like, oh shoot, we're all out of food and the stores have closed down indefinitely or for 15 days, you know? We're just closing down for 15 days, okay? Two years later. I learned my lesson, okay? All right, let's go trucking. We gotta go pick up our load. We have a load of two headers that are headed down to Minnesota. I gotta chain them down, tie them down, and get as far as I can today yet. All right, I'm all loaded up, tied down. My tarp's up here. Got two headers. Got them chained down, got them strapped down. So I got chains. I can't really see, it's so dark, eh? Chains crisscrossing here and in the back. And straps, going over the straps, holding the load down. Chains holding the load down and together on the trailer and from sliding back and forth. Very light load. One's going to Chatfield, Minnesota. The other's going to a town called, what's it called in? Cawson, Cawson, Minnesota, something like that. Should be fun, let's get going. Pulled it out into the light here. Had to go use the washer, get myself ready for the road. Here's my two headers. Got these chained down. I'm just gonna bungee these chains here to there so that they don't unravel, they stay there. Got my binders locked. Chains crisscrossed, smushes these things together on the dunnage. Well, smush would be the wrong word. It pins them together and prevents it from moving forward and back. Also holds it down. We also have this dunnage that's nailed down to the trailer. Another strap here holding it down. Nailed down to the trailer here, which also prevents it from sliding. Well, it's safe to say those are not going anywhere, except with me. That wind is a little cold. The temperature outside is only minus five Celsius, but the wind is cold. I had to switch one of my straps. That's why I like to double check the load in the light. I was tying it down kind of in the dark back there, right? Even though I thought I could see everything. One of my straps had a little nick in it. Not good. So I had to take that strap off, replace it with a good strap, re-secure it. Now we're good to go. All right, we are Ready to go. Strap down, lock down, chain down. We have a tri-axle trailer because my reload is gonna be a little heavy on the tail end. It's gonna be an oversize coming back up here to Manitoba. So just in case, they gave me the tri-axle just so that I don't have to worry about being overweight. I can be up to 40,000 pounds on my tri-axles in the U.S. <coughs> Something's rattling over there still. Can't figure out what it is. Oh, better lock myself in. I don't like driving without my... Hey, that solved the rattling problem. I don't like driving uh, without my doors locked. It's usually the first thing I do when I get in the truck. Lock myself in. Well, let's go. So we have 881 kilometers, 550 miles to our first delivery. We want to get there tomorrow sometime at a decent time. In 400 meters, turn right. 
I'm hoping that I can get both headers delivered tomorrow. Chatfield and, and Cawson, Minnesota are about an hour apart. So I'm hoping I can get both of them off and delivered tomorrow. And then get reloaded in the afternoon maybe even. I hope so. I mean, if not, we'll have to grab that load the next day in the morning. head about 20 minutes up the road to the Flying J in St. Agath where I'm going to pull in there, check my load, and make sure everything is uh, where it should be and as it should be. Make sure that uh, nothing is loosened. Flying J. Looks like the load is staying put as it should. I'm not expecting it to move, but I'm gonna pull in here anyways and just double check, make sure everything is still tight. I mean, I know I didn't miss anything, but you never know, you never know, you always gotta double check. Might grab a coffee and right away is here too. I just got some new instant coffee and I'm gonna try out. The instant coffee I had before was I think a Nescafe brand. Some brands, uh, some of their coffee I like, some of their instant coffee was just terrible. The last one I had made me more tired every time I drank it. Like I was more tired, it didn't make sense. So I tried a new brand now or a new, uh, a new style of it anyways. But I don't got any coffee or any water heated up right now. <laughs> that was my fault. I'll just treat myself. Go inside, just grab a coffee. I have food in here. Karen, I'm not gonna make a U-turn. I'm going to Flying J. She doesn't listen to me. This place looks pretty full. Whoops, maybe I should turn those off. The guys are trying to sleep here. I'm always preaching that we should be quiet at the truck stop. And then I come in. Bah! Hypocrite Josh here. <sighs> turn, turn those things off. I'm gonna go park right in front of the pumps. I'm only gonna be like three minutes, five tops. It doesn't look too busy. I won't park in the pumps, you park in front of it. You got like a five minute window if you park in front of there. Quickly run in, grab a coffee, check everything. Okay, he wants me to go first. All right. Thank you. Look at this green and white peat over here. Sweet custom paint job. Oh, we're gonna do a slow roll past this beauty. Oh. Look at that. Nice. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. that's nice. That's nice, that got me a little excited. That's nice. Did you see that? Oh, Blue, don't worry. I still love you more. I still love you more. Don't worry. Don't worry. That was a nice Peter. I don't need fuel. I wouldn't fuel here anyways. I'd fuel in the U.S. Cheaper. He's taking pictures of the pumps, this guy. What was he? First time? What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you going to walk in front of me now? What are you doing? Where is he? No, he's just gonna, okay. Oh, he works here. Okay, that's why. <laughs> I thought he was just taking pictures of the garbage cans and stuff. Must be part of his job. <laughs> uh, first time seeing a garbage can? Yeah, take a picture. All right, we're gonna 
gonna stop right here. Go and double check everything. I got a new jacket today, I feel super spiffy. Look at this. This is my going into the truck stop jacket. This is not my working jacket. This is just my my nice my nice blue jacket. Check that out, eh? Blue flannel. Found it today. Couldn't say no. I got new shoes recently too. New work shoes. Steel toes? Oh, they're all dirty already. That's what happens. They're work shoes. New shoes, new jacket, new me. Feels great. Can't wait to wear this in size. My first time wearing this out. <laughs> oh, I get so excited over the weirdest things now. You can tell I'm like in my mid thirties. Get excited for a new jacket and new shoes. Except no one else really cares. Everything should be good still. I'm not expecting it to be loose. Tight, tight, tight. Tight, tight, tight. Noise.
just did the walk around. I'm out of the way. I'm safe here. And where I park is directly in front of the driveway here. So anybody who would want to park beside me on this side, if anyone wants to park in there, straight shot back. Safest possible place to be. This guy on this side of me here, whenever he leaves in the morning, it'll be before me probably. He can just drive straight out the driveway. I don't have to worry about him dragging his trailer over my truck. You know the, you know the drill. Same thing every night. So I'm happy here. I got all the brakes set. Government knows that I'm going to bed. Got my bunk heater warming up back there. My engine heater is set to start about two hours before I won't turn the engine over. Everything's all ready for bed. And I am exhausted. So thanks for hanging out with me today, everybody. There we got a lot done today. We had a huge variety of content. We went to the doctor's office, we went back home, loaded up the truck, crossed the border, ended up in Rothsay, Minnesota. Tomorrow, I'm gonna try to get down to my two deliveries, get them off the truck tomorrow yet. It's gonna be a little tight. I'm gonna have to hurry, <clears throat> but <clears throat> I'm always in a hurry, so that shouldn't be any different than usual. Get those off the truck and then I'll head over to my pickup, which probably won't get loaded tomorrow. It'll probably be loaded the day after. It's gonna be oversized load. We'll get that loaded up and head on back the following day. Deliver that after. And we'll see where we can uh, see what we can make make of it. <laughs> Tired. You know the drill. I'll see you right here tomorrow. Take care.